Hello and welcome to today's Emerson webinar titled Electric Actuation for Delayed Coker Valves. In this session, we will review a specific electric actuator design that can potentially improve the process and reliability of automated isolation valves used in the delayed coker unit of a refinery. This will include an overview of the unique severe service challenges that this process presents to actuators, and then outline what design features can be incorporated into a motor operator to improve safety and reliability. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to enter and submit them in the Q&A section of your screen, and these will be answered following the conclusion. And please note that even though this is a simulated presentation, which means that the audio you will hear is pre-recorded, I am here live and will be monitoring the presentation, which will be recorded to capture any questions and answers. Motor-operated valve is an isolation or control valve that is powered by an electric actuator, which can also be referred to as a motor operator. This type of actuator is commonly used in applications that require reliable control on valves that have high torque or thrust requirements due to valve size or severe service conditions. It's particularly suitable for gate valve operation as this type of valve is typically designed with an Acme threaded stem and integral motor flange connection. The motor operator connects to the valve stem directly through the worm gear mechanism or an auxiliary gearbox and provides torque at the valve stem, which is converted to thrust through the rising Acme stem. Similarly, a motor operator can be assembled to an auxiliary worm gearbox, which will provide quarter turn operation on ball, butterfly, or plug type valves. The basic control system for a motor operator will include limit switches, which set the open and close stroke limits on the valve, along with torque switches, which limit the amount of torque output from the actuator to protect the valve. Integral starter, transformer, and remote control inputs are also typical in an MOV. And beyond that, there is a long list of options that can be custom configured for the particular application. In a delayed coker unit, we will find a significant amount of ball, gate, and plug valves, which automatically isolate and divert residual hydrocarbons operating at high temperatures. The process conditions and size of these valves result in elevated torque and thrust requirements which make the motor operator the actuator of choice for these applications. Some of the severe service challenges associated with a coker include a reliable sequence of operation to allow the uninterrupted batch operation of the drums. The majority of automated valves in a delayed coker need to stroke at every cycle or switching of drums. Therefore, it is critical that every actuator operate consistently and reliably. There is safety interlocks programmed between various MOVs ensuring that the valves can only be allowed to open or close in the proper sequence. This is another critical requirement which prevents unintended operation of the valves, a potential safety hazard in this type of process. In case of actuator or power failure to the motor, a means of manual operation requiring a low effort to stroke the valve must be included with the actuator. Due to the severe service nature of the applications, and an electrical and mechanical design that will resist high temperatures and vibration is important to ensure long-term reliability. The process is such that the hydrocarbon or coke will begin to build up in the valves over time. Therefore, proper sizing of the actuator that will overcome excessive torque buildup and not exceed valve stem allowable must be taken into account. And finally, resistance to hazardous and explosive gases and dust in addition to corrosive environments, are to be considered when selecting the proper motor operator. Let's first review the different electric actuator technologies that are available for various process and refining applications. For control valves, such as sliding stem globes, deported ball, or damper applications, designs such as the Betis RTS are available, which provide accurate control and continuous duty operation and compact design. This particular design uses a variable frequency controller that allows for adjustable speeds with the ability to provide non-intrusive configuration and advanced diagnostics either locally or remotely. Compact multi-turn version is also available for isolation of small gate and globe valves. The same RTS design can be configured to provide true mechanical fail-safe function for either linear or quarter turn valves. This actuator can be used on either control or on-off applications, 
and is field upgradable to allow for analog control, including direct PID interface. Failsafe speed is also adjustable and independent of motor speed. And because of the spring return design, these units are suitable in a SIL-3 environment. For on-off applications that require high torque and thrust output, the larger multi-turn base designs, such as the M2CP and XTE3000, can provide reliable control with a multitude of options and configurations depending on the specific application. The M2CP can be supplied with or without integral controls, the latter being particularly suitable for severe service applications that may result in high temperatures and or vibration. These designs can also be configured for modulating control, although generally for short time duty. Various two-wire network control options such as HART and foundation field bus are also available on these designs. If advanced diagnostics and connectivity is desired in a multi-turn based actuator, then microprocessor-based designs such as the Betis XTE3000 or RTS can also be used to provide continuous monitoring and real-time data to assess the health and status of the MOVs. Critical parameters such as motor torque, speed, voltage, and temperature can also be analyzed to assist with preventative maintenance and potentially reduce downtime. When combined with the DCM Link Unified Interface software for electric actuators, the customer can really take advantage of the diagnostic capabilities of an intelligent motor operator. Operating conditions in any refinery's delayed coking unit are extremely severe, perhaps the harshest of any refinery operation, with inlet temperatures of the residual oil flowing from the fractionator through the transfer line into the coke drum exceeding 800 degrees Fahrenheit or 425 degrees Celsius. During the filling of the coking process, torques are high and tend to increase as the process media builds up in the valve's wetted parts, putting additional stress on the transfer line ball valve and added operational torque on the multi-turn electric valve actuator. The process of coking requires multiple actuators to perform a sequence series of valve strokes to divert process in a precisely timed event. This sequenced event is controlled by a program logic command and must be executed at each actuator reliably and consistently every time. During the coke removal process, there is a high level of vibration and water hammer effect as the coke is drilled out by high-pressure water jet blasting the coke residue from the lines and coke drums. The introduction of high-pressure water into the high-temperature piping causes rapid expansion and temperature fluctuation. The coke product naturally has traces of sulfur, which can be corrosive when subjected to water during the unit washdown. This process also produces of airborne dust covering all surfaces within the drum and its immediate surroundings. The coke dust not only creates challenges for corrosion protection, but builds up in crevices impeding instrument functionality. In addition to the harsh conditions, the area for equipment maintenance is confined, hot, and potentially dangerous. Selection of a suitably designed and sized motor operator is therefore critical to ensure reliability and safety of the coker unit. Some of the critical MOVs include Inlet valves ranging in size from 6 inch to 16 inch, which isolate the high temperature hydrocarbon from the furnace and or bottom of the coke drum, which is being drilled. Overhead vapor and blow dime valves, which isolate high temperature vapors between the drums. These valves can be as large as 36 inch in diameter. And the four way switching valve, which is continuously in operation. The actuator and controls on this valve are particularly critical as a failure of this MOV will potentially shut down the entire coker unit. The multitude of valves in the coker are controlling piping that transports steam, water, slurry, hydrocarbons, and vapors. The severe conditions of the coker operation often have a detrimental effect on these valves and the actuators operating them. Making it more critical is the fact that the valves must work on a schedule of sequential strokes to divert process in a precisely timed event. They each have safety interlocks restricting their opening and closing through limit switches to maintain process control. An inoperable valve actuator must be reinstated quickly so that the system can continue functioning. If actuators fail, the valves will need to be opened or closed manually, a strenuous and time-consuming process for the unit operator, yet a necessity to keep the coking-decoking process in sequence and on schedule. 
Actuators operating in the Coker unit are subjected to very harsh conditions, and as such, it is not uncommon for conventional actuators to experience a very short mean time between failure, in some cases less than six months. Motor operator failures are a constant and costly problem for the refinery and can be attributed to a variety of conditions. Water hammer and vibration effects can cause failure of internal electrical connections and or dislodged microprocessor components. In certain cases, motors may even become disconnected from the actuator housing through the harsh vibrations. Coke dust fines can penetrate the actuator housing, causing inoperability of electronic components, or causing on-off push buttons to become clogged and inoperable. Corrosive elements can erode aluminum actuator housings, wiring, and even its external handwheel, the sole operational backup. These actuator failures can result in unscheduled shutdowns of the coper units, unplanned service repairs or replacement, and excessive maintenance costs. In addition, process time is extended, and since the coke is used as feedstock in other refinery units, production can potentially be curtailed. The use of the Bettis M2CT actuator has been successful in delayed coker applications for over 25 years due to its robust and proven design. The coker motor operator solution is comprised of the standard heavy-duty mechanical design, along with the modification of the established electromechanical control package which has provided exceptional service in various demanding applications. While not the newest iteration of electric actuator technology, it has been engineered to provide the necessary features for success in coker applications, resulting in high reliability and extended service life. A major design advantage is the ductile iron gear housing that encloses the heavy-duty linear powertrain, which can withstand the high torque and thrust loads while maintaining alignment and resisting cracks or deformation. This durability is important in order to maintain precise gear alignment for the rigors of high service demands. Anti-friction bearings are used throughout the entire power transmission gear train to assist with this. Sensing of position and torque in the M2CP is purely mechanical, with drives connected directly to the worm shaft providing accurate and reliable feedback into the electronic enclosure. For gate or multi-turn valves, the output drive sleeve is supported top and bottom by tapered roller bearings for supporting actual and radial loads. These robust bearings ensure that the valve thrust is contained, resulting in less wear and potential failures of the valve stem bushing, a problem which is perpetuated by high temperatures and a steady increase in valve torque and thrust over time. Another unique feature of the M2CP design is the handwheel override, which is geared to the worm in lieu of being directly connected to the valve stem. This design provides several benefits. The manual handwheel or lever is always side-mounted for easy access and requires very low rim pull effort to operate due to the mechanical advantage provided by the gearing, which is especially important as torque increases over time. The declutch mechanism is directly downstream of the motor, which requires minimal effort to switch from auto to manual motor mode. And since the handwheel is connected to the worm gear at all times, both the position and torque drives are continuously sensing, even during manual operation. Sizing safety factors are also an important consideration for coker valves. For reliable operation, any actuator should be sized to provide a true two-time safety factor, accounting for the variable torques needed as the process progresses, along with piping expansion and contraction. Inherent to coker ball valves used in the service are high running loads, which increases motor temperature and reduces the life expectancy of the motor. To combat this, a Class A traded motor is typically used for these applications, which allows the motor to run hotter and longer without overheating and or potentially tripping on thermals versus the conventional Class F rated motor. The modular control package of the M2CP is a versatile design that incorporates plug-in printed circuit board technology, which minimizes wiring and allows for ease of service, modification, or complete removal through the use of a common screwdriver. Unlike many newer and more advanced electronic actuator designs, this solution has no microprocessor components which are susceptible to premature failure in severe services. Rather, it incorporates reliable circuit boards with no termination wiring and compact internal limit switches and relays that can withstand the high temperature all actuators are exposed to in a delayed coking unit. Because of the unique design, the M2CP electrical control package and components can withstand the vibration and violent shaking of the actuator during the coking process. The smaller mass components, such as the limit switches, resist self-destruction generated from inertia and momentum. 
The electronic enclosure is a robust marine grade aluminum design that uses a hinge cover with stainless steel captured bolting. The complete M2CP assembly is protected by a polyester powder coating standard in order to provide superior corrosion resistance. The M2CP can also be supplied with unique control options for use in coker service, including the following. A separate control module, or SCM, which allows the actuator to be remotely operated at a safe distance. This also results in a minimal number of electronic components left in the main enclosure, which are constantly subjected to high heat and vibration. The SCM includes a special hardwired push button panel, which is unaffected by the excessive dust and vibration, yet located within sight of the actuator in order to verify proper operation. A close couple circuit breaker, or CBM, which allows main power to be disconnected directly at the actuator. This explosion-proof device provides lockout protection and allows for safe maintenance of the actuator assembly. A push-button module, or PBM, provides remote control of the actuator through open, close, stop push buttons and LED position indication while maintaining electronic components within the main electrical enclosure. And an anti-vibration package that prevents loosening of the motor along with electrical components in the main enclosure. The importance of motor-operated valves that control the operation in the delayed coker unit cannot be understated. As a batch process, the coker becomes a potential bottleneck in an otherwise continuous refining operation. Any significant interruptions could impact the entire refinery throughput, potentially costing the company millions of dollars per day in lost production. A valve actuator, seemingly a very small item in the total process, has a significant importance and a great impact on the delayed coking operation. Premature failure can lead to extra costs for operator overtime, additional manpower for manual valve operation, replacement costs, and potential refinery downtime, not to mention the safety aspects associated with manual operation. Here's an example of a customer using the M2CP to help improve the reliability and safety of their coker facility. After having experienced continuous failures with the motor operators in their DCU, a Canadian refinery had a significant incident in their coker plant which resulted in approximately $30 million of lost production and prompted an internal review to investigate potential measures that would prevent similar events from occurring in the future. This particular refinery had a six-drum arrangement in their coker unit, and a reliability review of each section was conducted. The study concluded that the first set of drums had experienced 15 actuator failures in the eight years since startup. Similarly, the second set had seen 16 failures in the same time frame, and the third set had 47 recorded failures in only five years. It was determined that misalignment between isolation valves was a major contributing factor to the incident in question. In addition, actuator failures were being caused by excessive heat and vibration. An immediate need for a more reliable motor operator with the ability to implement an interlock system between MOVs was quickly identified. This short video taken at the facility shows what kind of impact heat and vibration can have on coker MOVs. Following the internal review, the Betis M2CP was selected as a retrofit field-proven solution based on its standard robust design with ductile iron housing, powder-coated exterior, and capability for remote operation. In order to increase actuator reliability, the design was modified by removing as many components as possible from the main electrical enclosure and mounted in a separate control module, or SCM. This would protect the components from the excessive heat and vibration, which were the primary cause for premature failures in the motor operators. Additional anti-vibration measures were implemented for the remaining components in the main actuator assembly in order to prevent damage during normal operation. This included Loctite on the fasteners, drill and loom assembly of the motor assembly rods, special sheathing for wire protection, and a metal collar for the potentiometer to ensure it remained engaged. Permissives that were interlocked with other valves were incorporated into the actuator control circuit to independently control opening and closing of the actuator. This ensured that the isolation valve can only be operated in the proper sequence. In addition, 
both a continuous torque and position feedback signal was incorporated into the control circuit of the motor operator, which enabled the customer to monitor the status and condition of the valve. Following the implementation of the M2CP Coker design, the impact to the improvement and reliability of the Coker was almost immediate, with only one minor failure being observed in three years and no loss of production. The M2CP electric actuator with separate control module has proven to be a great solution for the high temperature, high vibration process environment, providing multiple benefits to the customer. This includes increased safety by virtue of reduced heat and vibration for the plant personnel operating the actuators through the local control station. In addition, the safety interlock system restricts MOV opening and closing to maintain correct sequencing in the batch process, thus preventing unintended valve operation, which could potentially result in a catastrophic failure. A significant decrease in mean time between failures was observed, resulting in increased reliability and a decrease in downtime. This also resulted in a reduction of maintenance costs by virtue of the design improvements to the actuator. The reliability of the MOVs has also allowed the plant to be able to conduct and complete maintenance during scheduled plant shutdowns without any interruption due to failing actuators. That concludes today's webinar presentation on electric actuation. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us, and we will now respond to any questions that you may have on this topic. If you would like to send us any queries or comments, please feel free to use the contacts listed here. Now, uh, one of them that we've gotten is how many interlocks can one uh, M2CP handle? Um, so it depends on the amount of relays that we can fit into the actuator. Uh, typically, we can interlock at least two other valves into the unit, um, but it's all custom made, so it's a case by case. So if you have a specific application, um, please please send that to us, and we'll uh, we'll be glad to review. Uh, another question: Would the late coking licensors has EIM been approved as an actuator of choice? Um, so in the U.S., the main licensors for the process uh, that includes Foster Wheeler and Bechtel uh, have EIM approved. They do have EIM at various uh, facilities. I know there's a, there's a limited amount of licensors who do handle the cokers, uh, but uh, so as far as I'm aware, all the major licensors do have EIM installed and working in their facilities. Um, has the M2CP undergone any vibration testing? Um, so yes, we have done some vibration testing to military standard, uh, specifically was for uh, for Navy qualification. Um, so we do have some of that information available um, if anyone is interested. Another question, what kind of special materials do you use in actuators for these applications uh, compared to conventional actuators? Um, so as far as material, there's nothing really special that we, we use on the actuators themselves. Um, the standard materials used in the M2CP construction um, are suitable for, for coker applications, both temperature and corrosion resistance. We do offer a, um, a three-coat ceramic coating uh, for the actuator if you do need any, any additional corrosion resistance. That's a pretty standard application, so we can do that if necessary. Um, is there an ATEX version and low temperature with CE marking? So ATEX and low temp. The answer is yes. Uh, we do have uh, ATEX certification for the M2CP. That's just a standard requirement. We would, we would label it and prepare it accordingly. Um, and the M2CP is available with what's called an Arctic package. That'll be good down to minus 50 degrees Celsius. We add um, low temp grease in the bearings and in the gearing, there's a motor heater installed so uh, and a space heater is standard, so it is suitable for low temperature that can be added. Another question is, can existing M2CP units be upgraded for coker service? That's a good question. Uh, the answer is yes, potentially. The, but the M2CP is, is a modular design, so it can be converted um, to add components or remove them. Say, for example, if you want to 
uh, convert it to a non-integral design and put an SCM. That can be done by removing the components and adding them, or if anti-vibration preparation wants to be added to, to the actuator or permissives or, or those types of components. Uh, potentially the whole enclosure or electrical a modular enclosure can be removed uh, or the internals and, and modified as, as required. The next question, is this a fail in place design? That's correct. Um, motor operators are typically fail in place, which means if you lose power to the motor, uh, the actuator stays put unless it's a spring return like the RTS or better be backup. That being said, um, you do have an option for an ESD relay input so that means if uh, you can send the signal to to send the actuator to say a closed or open position uh, if that signal is triggered but you still need power to the motor so another question is this particular model the m2cp specifically designed for coker applications and what are the specific things that make it different um, the answer is no it, the m2cp is our um, standard electromechanical actuator that we use for various applications, various industries. Uh, but like, like outlined in, in the presentation, um, there are specific things that we will do in the coker applications uh, to make it a little more suitable. And it, all, it also depends on which valves in the coker themselves. So the higher vibration ones may need a high vibration kit. They may need the controls that are located uh, remotely. Um, but yeah, we can we can custom uh, design or custom configure really is more accurate um, the, the the actuator for that application. And I guess a related question: What's included in the high vibration kit? Um, so high vibration kit uh, again, it's spoken to in the presentation, but uh, the the motor itself is 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 loomed into place so it doesn't come loose. There's uh, specific fasteners in the enclosure, uh, there's Loctite on, on some of the components, uh, the wiring is protected so that it doesn't make contact with, with any other components. So it, it's, a, it's a pretty simple add-on to the standard actuator. Again, there's nothing really very special for the Coker itself, the Coker uh, design. It's really just separate uh, options or configurations that are added to make it a little more suitable. Right. What else do we have? Uh, is a separate power supply required for the SCM? Uh, no, it is not. The actuator transformer will power uh, power all the components in the actuator, so nothing else is required. Um, and what type of diagnostic feedback? So you can get position and torque feedback, both discrete and continuous if required. Uh, there's a monitor relay option in the M2CP, which tells you that the actuator is ready for um, remote operation. Um, there's a signal for the local stop or um, remote control operation on the actuator, so you know what position that's in. So not as much diagnostic information, obviously, as a, as a, as a smart or microprocessor base, but there's quite a few that we can add. Uh, so one of the questions is, are MOVs always used in this application? So there are also pneumatic or hydraulic types. Um, I would say 90 plus percent are, are, uh, are motor operators. The only exceptions are there's a few valves. Sometimes the back pressure valve needs to modulate or perhaps have a fail position. In that case, they may use a pneumatic or hydraulic. Um, but typically, yeah, all, all the main valves on the coker uh, are, are coker valves, or sorry, are, are motor operated valves. Um, and then one question, can the actuator be interlocked if the feedback to the valve detects that it's not in the correct position? Um, so yes, this would be considered a permissive. So you can interlock one of the valves with another isolation valve, let's say on, on separate drums, which won't allow the valve to open, say for example, unless valve B is closed. Um, so yes, that can be done. You can interlock uh, different valves 
together to uh, to ensure that it doesn't doesn't inadvertently open when it when it shouldn't. Good question. So thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's time, and uh, yeah, hope to hear from you again. Take care.